Hello everybody, welcome to a new video of Jane's Speed Shop. So this is the day after the dyno uh, session of yesterday. If you don't, didn't see that video, have a look in the playlist. See the video before because this came after uh, the session and we're going to do some research of uh, the problems that I had after 4500 RPMs or like 4100 to the rev limit that was at the moment at 5400 RPMs. So have a look on my website, yeaspeechup.com is over here. And uh, don't forget to subscribe if you want more information, have a, have a look in the have a look in the right corner of you, there's my logo, you can click on it and see all the other uh, videos of this project. So yesterday we had problems at revving over 4500 and making power. There was still a uh, building boost, so that wasn't really a problem, but there are some issues that now falling into place, I think, maybe. So the spark plugs on this side were a little bit darker than on the other side. Um, that's also weird, why is that? On the other side it looked pretty perfect, a uh, little bit off to the uh, whitish. They look just good, and on this side they are just a little bit brownish black. I had them uh, in another video of the dyno session on my website. Uh, but also is a thing that in the beginning already I thought over when I put load on the engine it starts a little bit vibrations in the car more than I was used to. So yesterday when I was going to the dyno I drove like 130 kilometers an hour and put it into neutral and the vibrations were gone. So then the engine was going to idle 900 rpms and it was all gone. So what I now know that it's also not uh, having power over 4500 RPM. I spoke to some people and they said, some people, the first thing that they said is, yeah, maybe it's your cam timing is off. So, and maybe it's, and I thought, yeah, now, because I see the spark, maybe it's just on one side, maybe on this side. So, people following this channel for a long time already know that I rebuilt this engine and also did the cam timing and I also filmed it. So, but there is a thing that I didn't check and is that if on the crank pulley there is a, it's a vibration damper. So there is also time markings on it. But are these time markings still in a good position? I didn't check real uh, bottom dead center or top dead center with the markings on the pulley. So, and I did not check valve opening according to the real top dead center or bottom dead center, or when they shoot open. The spec list is in there. The only thing that I did is check the, when the camshafts line in, there is a gap and you can put a tool in it. I did that. But yeah, if they're not in line with the bottom pulley, then yeah. Yeah, so there is, there are, uh, some people told me already, they found in the, in the past that those vibration dampers, there is a piece of rubber in between and that it can, yeah, all the ones can slide over. So the thing what I'm now going to do is take the downpipe up because I'm also going to change the lambda sensor because it failed. But yesterday when I was driving home, I had a lambda value. So yeah, that's weird. So, but yeah, I don't trust that sensor anymore now because it died and came back to life. That's weird. So that sensor is ordered. I will get a new one, put it in. I think it came because on the dyno we, he, we did some tuning on low boost settings and getting the fuel map and then you get a lot of bypass over the wastegate, a lot of heat in the exhaust. So it's not a real life situation because normally you're going through the boost range and not a long period. So normally the lambda sensor should not see that high temperatures. But I think in this case could be, yeah. The thing that demonstrates and killed it. So I'm going to change it just to be sure. So down pipe is going off. So these two pipes are going up because I have more reads into the areas of the spark plugs. Take all the plugs off, uh, out and then test the coils. Uh, if I got uh, ignition on all the coils, I can do it with max issue. I showed it before. I'm going to do that also on, this, on the other side. Then I'm going to do uh, Boris Kobo cylinders. So you have a look if they all look clean and not have any things in it or damaged things or I mean, some things you don't want to see. And then I want to take the valve covers off and 
Um, I can already, without the valve covers off, I've got a spark plug out, I can have a look with the camera in the cylinder and see when the piston is on top that center. I can check that already and if I have then something that's not correct then I already know. Because the fingers also, Daniel said, it can run still a lot of timing with this fuel. And this is an, a low octane fuel setting, so normally you should expect to have at a certain point it is not limited, but I think he mentioned that he thought he had earlier in the with earlier so with a lower timing earlier knock so that could also mean that the values that I put uh, the crank pulley on the timing setting that is not yeah I, I calibrated on 15 degrees so that maybe is 15 degrees not 15 degrees so maybe 15 degrees is uh, yeah like 10 degrees in real life of 15 degrees is uh, 20 degrees or something else. So, yeah, we will see. So that's where I'm going to start. Dismantling stuff. First, I'm going to lift it up to get the downpipe uh, out of it and the ladder sensor out of it. And then from there, so let's go. Downpipe is removed. Um, also got the wastegate removed. Otherwise I cannot remove the downpipe. So. Uh, also had to remove three coils. I have to turn it and then pull it out, so it's pretty tight. So that also makes sense why I could not fit the bigger downpipe. I thought about it, but uh, yeah, I cannot fit a four inch or a three and a half inch in here. If I want to do that, I have to modify this this section here to get a bigger downpipe. But yeah, for now we first uh, going to do this. Otherwise. Uh, yeah, if I want to have in the future, I get too much back pressure in the exhaust and cannot flow enough uh, behind the turbo, then yeah, big modifications and the engine need to come out, I think, to modify this section here to get a bigger pipe in there. But yeah, that's not uh, for now. So for now, everything that I took apart from the dump or anything else uh, they have shown them there are no leaks also the wastegate the connections over here are all they all colored by heat but didn't find any anything yet so what I'm going to do is I pull all the I uh, put the the free um, listen colors back so I know where, which one I, I numbered them one to four and also the other side put the um, the, the uh, plugs back in, or the, 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 wi the wires, and then take the plugs out and do a spark plug test. Have a look if all they all function like they should do. If that's the case, then I take all the wires off and all the plugs off. Also do the on the other side, and then I'm going to borescope the cylinders. So spark plugs are all out. They look all the same now. Yesterday, uh, these were a little bit darker. Then, so this is bank two, this is bank one. Oh, bank one was a little bit darker than bank two yesterday after we did a run and shut it down straight away. So yesterday, of course, I drove home about 70 kilometers, just slowly cruise. So they call it now all the same. So not really any problems there anymore, I think. So I borrow coat all the cylinders. So on this bank, the pistons look a little bit uh, darker, there's a little bit more, yes, I said unburned stuff on it. So you can see it didn't burn as good as on that side. But uh, these pistons on the other side, where also the pistons were, or the sparklers were a little bit lighter after we did a, a power for a power run on the dyno, they are cleaner. On this side, it is just a little bit less, but I didn't see any damage or anything. So I also checked. Um, Top that center from cylinder one. If it's on the crank pulley, the same. So it's not turned on the because it's a there's, it's a rubber damper. So maybe the outside was turned over. So I checked uh, zero T one. It's called so that's top that center on cylinder one, and it's exactly top that center. So the more I look to it, because there is now a difference between that uh, cylinder uh, bank and this cylinder bank. I also going to check if this camshaft is in the correct position towards that one and then have a look 
So before that, I'm going to check the ignition. If will all the spark plugs fire. Uh, when I activate them with Max ECU, there is a diagnostic tool in it. I already showed it in a video before, but I will show you one how it works and the other one you can see in the video. So that's the next thing to do. Testing the spark plugs and the ignition coils. So I've tested all these seven. I got one over there on the engine, but already, already, I just have one cylinder two. That one uh, of the two outputs is not working. So it's not in the wiring because I tested it. So this coil, the A connection is not giving a spark. Uh, tested also the leads and the plugs. This is all good because I tested on another one. So yeah, it didn't spark on one of the two plugs. Uh, they do, does not look like it because they still look pretty yeah, normal. So I don't know how long it already is, but yeah, that cylinder had just one plug firing. So I don't really think that's the, the issue because there are also people that only run one spark plug in this engine and also running boost. So yeah, I don't think that's it. That's it. So how you test this, so I have the plug connected to cylinder one uh, connection, I can also use the other ones. And I have the plugs connecting to the engine on uh, just on steel, so it has an earth connection. And you have here the menu in Maxi issue diagnostic, injection and ignition output testing. And I have uh, just manually, have a cylinder one till eight. And if I push cylinder one, it will give a spark. And you can see it over there. Sometimes it's not. You can see it over there sparking. So that's working like it should. So next thing what I'm going to do is uh, next thing what I'm going to do is um, getting the valve covers off, and I'm going to check the timing. So, valve covers off both sides. A little bit harder to get them off because of the high solenoids that are on there. So this is the sas solenoid, so that will switch cylinder two and three, and the other sides seven and eight uh, or uh, five and eight. I mean five and eight and two and three. That's how the system switches these cylinders off. If you use it, I'm not using it on this. And I'm not going to use it. So what did I did? I checked the base position, put the pulley on 40 degrees. Then there are two um, tools you could put them in here and in there. They are still in the good position. So that's the base setting. Um, you cannot really do anything wrong with these cams. <coughs> but because there is a slot in it, these cam gears are the same, left and right. So you can they are interchangeable, there's only one part number for it, not, not a left one or a right one. There is a left and a right camshaft. Uh, you, you cannot change out these camshafts, you, so you cannot put the left camshaft in the right bank. So that's a mistake you cannot make because it's here a little bit longer than on this side. So you cannot uh, make that mistake. So the weird thing is with these camshafts is that uh, on this side, there is a cylinder, the intake valve closes 13 degrees earlier than on the other bank. So I will get the values and show you. So these are the values. So this is for a normal V8. So M13 V8, not a non AMG, non code 479, so the SAS. So you can see there's still a little bit of a difference in it. So uh, because you have a slack timing chain slack, this one is getting a little bit later, so 27 degrees. So if you so this side is this cam, this side is that cam, and under here is, is the way around. This side is the left cam, and this is the right. You can also see it here, but this is the way around. So if you get timing chain slack, it gets longer, then it gets two degrees later. So that's not really that big of a problem. Um, if you have an AMG cam, left and right should be the same, so if you have timing change leg, you should change it. I think you should also do it here, but yeah. Okay, this is the situation I have. So there's a very big difference in between these values. So if you see, there is like already, this is left, and this, so this can come 
8 degrees later than this one, but this is completely weird. 14.8 degrees. So if the timing change get longer, this one has 14 degrees difference when closing the valve. So that's that's very strange. So that's this this side. I also checked it. The intake valve closes 14 degrees after bottom dead center. Uh, because I looked in with the camera and looked in the, the bore when it's on bottom dead center and then it goes up and it's around 15 degrees after it already. I checked it also on the other side and it's around 30 degrees. So that's yeah. Yeah, I think it's just weird. It has something to do with the SAS system, of course, because this cam does not have it. It will go then 14 degrees later. So if you imagine that this one is going 28 degrees and this is going on 30, it's like 2 degrees difference. But later on it's 25. So you can say it's around 13 degrees difference in closing the intake valve. So there's also getting less air in that cylinder. Or it, it, yeah. It doesn't work the same then. So uh, if you ever want to do a turbo build, don't use this or don't use these cylinder heads. So what's the plan for now? Um, I checked everything that I could check and the assembly of the engine is all correct. So I did not make any mistakes with assembling this engine. Also not with the heads or with the timing. So. I think it's the, the problem that I have after 4500 RPMs is I think a combination of a few. So I think it's, it's also the back pressure and the back pressure is not always bad but with this engine you have the same springs on the intake valve as on the exhaust and the exhaust valve is much bigger because that's a single valve. So I think I also have, I suspect valve float already. Um, then there is the, the, the turbo sizing and there, then is that, that weird valve overlap. I think because normally there are enough people that did uh, build a turbo on a normal engine like, without the SAS system, just with the normal cams and they didn't have any problems. So I think, yeah, this, this should have to do something with it because it was not uh, misfires or lack on fuel or uh, weird AFR values. That was not the case. So what am I going to do? So originally this turbo system I built it for four, five, around 500 horsepower. That was my goal in the beginning, just drive on regular fuel. But I made the change over to E85. So I think my uh, system before the turbo is then too small if I look now to it. And I, I all look to all the dimensions. So I think I'm going to remove this turbo system and build uh, a bigger system, so the piping diameters are bigger. And I think I'm also going to change the turbo. So I'm going to consider all that and next video you will know my final decision. But I think I'm going to do that. And uh, I also, what is a fact of course, I have to do something about the springs and the camshafts. So also going to look into that because I cannot stay driving with these camshafts, that's not a possibility, so I have to do something. Or I'm going to normal aspirated or AMG cams and double springs for sure. So uh, yeah, that is the plan. So it could get much worse, there's no real damage in it. There's still the weird thing that I have on this side, darker spark plus on that side. But that is the, I've, in, in my opinion, the less breathable side so because it the, the camps are closing early the intake camps so yeah i have to think about it so lot, lots uh, lots of things to consider and to think about if you got any opinions or uh, information that would help let me know below the video and i try to to read it then to comment on it and uh, thanks for watching hope you liked it and see you for the next. And don't forget to have a look at my website, jamespizza.com is over here. So I hope you liked it and see you for the next video. Bye bye.